In my last video, we looked at what economics is. We looked at two primary concepts within that called scarcity and opportunity cost. We're not going to move on from those just quite yet. We're gonna look at a visual representation of those concepts today. So if you have not watched that video yet, please go back, check that one out first. I'll link it above. Today, we're going to look at those concepts through what's called an economic model. An economic model is just a visualization of an economic concept. Uh, they're often criticized for being a little bit oversimplified. I'll get into this more later in the video. Uh, but the, the point is that we're trying to s simply portray a concept that is fairly complicated in a way that is easy to understand. So sometimes, you know, there's the human element, there's all these things going on that's going to make it more difficult to create a real life situation with these models, but it's enough to get the point across and, and to share the concept to make it easier to understand. That's what we're gonna to do today. So today we're gonna to explore first of many economic models in this course, the production possibilities curve. You might also see it as a production possibilities frontier in other places. Um, this is going to be a visual representation of scarcity and opportunity cost. And it's gonna look at several other terms along the way. What the production possibilities curve is gonna do for us is it's gonna show the potential output or production level of two different goods and how they compare with one another given current resources and technology available. So this could be from the standpoint of an individual producing or it could be a company or even a government. Before we get into that though, let's take a look at what a good actually is. So a good can be defined in two different ways. You can have a capital good and you can have a consumer good. So what you would probably think of as a good is probably a consumer good. It's one that its intended final use is by the consumer uh, so anything from food items to your smartphone, those are all goods. Now a capital good on the other hand is, is one that is used to produce other goods. So I often like a tool or a piece of machinery that's used to create other consumer goods, that would be a capital good. Sometimes there's some carryover, so something like a computer obviously could be purchased for its final use by the consumer, in which case it'd be a consumer good, but it could also be a capital good if a business were to purchase one to program something uh, or to use in their production process, then it's a capital good at that point. So our production possibilities curve is gonna be illustrated by taking the two goods and then placing them on the axes. So one of the goods will be on the vertical, another on the horizontal. So let's go for this example with hamburgers on the vertical axis and tacos on the horizontal. Then we're gonna add number lines to each axis. Now this is gonna be made up. I'm not going off of anything real life here. Then we'll go ahead and add a line or a curve that's gonna represent the maximum output at any given allocation uh, based on the resources we have available. Obviously this is made up here too. This is gonna do a few things for us. It's gonna give us that visual representation of scarcity because we can't produce beyond the available resources. Also opportunity cost because we can't produce more of one thing without first giving up some of the other. So if we want more tacos, we're gonna to have to give up a certain amount of hamburgers in order to make that happen. Now, in this case, given the limited information we have here, we can't prioritize one good over the other. So we can't say that, oh, we want more tacos because of the number you can produce or more hamburgers because of this. It's all opinion at that point. We, need, we can only go off of the information we have. All points along the red line are considered efficient resource allocation because we are creating as many products as we possibly can. This is, again is visualizing scarcity for us. Anything outside of that red line is going to indicate something that's not possible using the, given the current resource that we have. Anything inside of the line is going to be indicative of inefficient resource allocations because we could be making more hamburgers or tacos, but for whatever reason we're not. However, it is possible for us to expand our production possibilities and shift our line outwards through what's known as economic growth. This can happen for a number of reasons. One could be improvements in human capital. We've already mentioned capital goods as goods that are used to create other goods. Humans are an important resource as well in the production process. If we're better educated or we're more highly skilled and trained, it's likely that that would improve our productivity as workers as well. Another reason might be new technology. Think about improvements to machinery that just make the production process more possible in less time. Even the production process itself may improve produ production efficiency. Specialization is a way to divide labor based on skills of the workers. 
think about how an assembly line is going to be more efficient at producing goods than workers going on their own doing every step by themselves. Finally, natural resources themselves might just become more or less available. If ground beef becomes more available due to cattle population growth or some other change, that allows for more production of both hamburgers and tacos. Let's jump back for a moment and look at our graph for a couple practice questions on scarcity and opportunity cost. First, is it possible to produce 400 hamburgers and 500 tacos at the same time? In this case, no. Scarcity of resources only allows us to produce at most 400 hamburgers if we chose to completely avoid producing tacos. We could produce 500 tacos if we opted to produce only 300 hamburgers. Let's say we're producing at that point of 300 hamburgers and 500 tacos. What would be the opportunity cost if we chose to produce 700 tacos instead? Well, in this case, our opportunity cost would be what we would give up, which in this case would have to be 150 hamburgers because we previously were at 300, had to drop down to 150 in order to produce those 700 tacos. Also, I want to reiterate this oversimplification argument based on this example. It's a great example of an oversimplification because very rarely would a company, much less an entire economy, only produce two different goods, especially when we use the production possibilities curve again to examine international trade in a couple videos. Like you would never actually see that, but we still use it. We still will use just the two examples because the point is that expanding the graph to reflect more options doesn't change the purpose or the message of the model. It's only going to complicate it and make it more complicated to understand, which we don't want to do that.